And then I bought a tank. Two weeks ago, I got a phone call, would you like a tank? And I thought, hmm, that's a bit weird. <laughs> um, it's a Challenger tank, oddly enough, which is quite good for pop-up farm. And I thought, of course we want a tank, it's our think tank. <laughs> so we've got one of these arriving next week at one of our schools. And um, what's it got to do with sustainability? Well, even if we scrap it, folks, it's worth 50 grand. We've paid five for it. So it's a pretty good deal. However, why would you scrap a tank? It'd be great fun. <laughs> so, so you can do things with tanks to raise awareness about what the hell are we doing in our world, yeah? The, 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 I tried to work out what this guy's name was. He's, he's called the Tank Man. Nobody ever knew what his name was. So he's called the Tank Man. So the Tank Man, interesting, that little film in Tiananmen. Or you can talk to artists, completely get your head in. It's, it's challenging us to think differently in unexpected ways. You can start to plant things in it. We haven't planted in our tank yet, but I can see that happening. All right? This is a school that, that set up that pro the project with us earlier in the year and they did the first version. This car was trashed in the car park. It was blown up overnight, one of the teacher's cars. And it sat there for ages. And yeah, we're a pretty passive bunch in England, you know? <laughs> um, anyway, it sat there for ages and, and, and so they've now made it into a garden. Um, you then begin to start to see how you can create demonstrator places and not just grow stuff but try to integrate all the threads energy food water waste so in this case we've got the bins that are becoming food growing spots we've got troughs we've got mobile growing trolleys you've got water capture on the roof that drips through very slowly using chains you've got uh, tin can growing you've got plastic based um, at the top there, plastic-based greenhouses, all of which are simple ways of looking at space, place, connection to growing stuff, nurturing plants, and just generally just succeeding in the little things. You know, growing a carrot, being able to have a carrot at the end of the year that you've grown because you planted it. And there's a great story about that because you know the big um, picture of the American troops running up the hill and they've got a flag and it's a very famous, iconic thing. Well, I went to Washington and I took that picture and I stuck a carrot on the flag. And it was called not just, not, just a, not, just, not just growing carrots or something. Anyway, this teacher came up to me at the end and said, quite liked your talk, it was all right. But when you, when you do it next time, and I thought, here we go. I said, she said, um, make sure that you don't just have a picture of a carrot. Have it on the carrot tree. And I thought, hmm. OK, have it on the carrot tree. Are you serious? And she said, oh, yeah, because then the children would understand where the carrots come from. So we've got a long way to go, you know? We have a long way to go. These are your cousins, just over the way there. Um, so where it gets us to is, is we begin to create the technologies. We begin to put together the patterns. We begin to understand that there are metrics around this that we can establish. And to do that, we, we, we built this website about five years ago, and we followed the pattern of activity, which is where we got the original pattern for pop-up from. And this one's got tons of archived stuff. It's all free to use. And if you want to send stuff to us, do. The basic principle is this. We're not just thinking of one site. We're thinking of hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them around the planet. And that every single one of those sites is uniquely configured to its community, but it plays a part in, in being something that connects into the bigger picture. So we're always thinking about local, global, detail, dynamic. You've always got that consciousness about being part of a big system, being playing something out on behalf and with others. So you begin to see that these ideas of large randomised controlled trials could actually become part of our methodology. Once you begin to tip, and you've got sufficient numbers involved, and we'll be there pretty soon, we're about on 500 at the moment, you begin to see ways in which these different initiatives can all begin to illustrate little solutions
that become really powerful solutions for people to think differently about how they use resources. So you get things like this, which is scaffolding poles, milk crates, and tetra packs to grow and or to build a building that becomes a herbal base for the community in the school site. And at the end of the season, people came, they just took away plants and dispersed them around town. This, okay, so this is what a tetra we've done pack is cut challenge. It open. And what and you end up with yeah. is effectively a little growing box. Okay. Now, in good Blue Peter style, uh, I'm going to jump to what happens next. So imagine getting the soil and you're chucking all your soil in here. What you end up with is something like that, which is like a little... It's not a great example, is it? Tetra Pak first version. A growing Tetra Pak. This one happens to have peppers. There's another pepper and a rather ropey looking bit of fennel, but it's doing, it's doing all right. And you can use other sorts of Tetra Packs. This is one that's got parsley growing in it. And I look forward to the results. So good luck, folks. There we are. You've started a revolution. So we have a, we ran the Tetra Pack challenge across the company that I sometimes work for called Mott McDonald. Mott's have got hundreds of offices around the planet. They're all indoors. They're engineers. They design things on CAD and occasionally wear hard hats and go outside and tell people how to build things. They've got lots and lots of window ledges. So we said, why don't we think about that and we'll give the engineers a challenge. And we got them to do this. We ended up with an acre of land globally dispersed on window ledges. Now, that's really interesting. It wasn't just interesting because it was like a food production thing, because it got them thinking about what else they could do. So the Olympic Committee came to us and said, what could we do as an Olympic legacy project? And they were trying to get us to grow red, white, and blue vegetables, for God's sake. And forget it. We're going to have a dispersed orchard. Heritage for plants. GPS the plants globally. No matter where you are, you can ping a GPS on it. You can plant a tree local to your environment that happens to be a food producing tree around here. I don't know, what would it be, maple or, I don't know, apples, yeah. Um, anyway, whatever it would be suited to your setting. So you, you have the archive of, of an, a heritage track, but you've also got the idea of being part of a global orchard. So you begin to get people's heads around that and you get the idea of intergenerational activity. It's going to be there for 70, 80, 90, 100 years. What's the yield potential long term? You can do all the maths, all the management of it in terms of data sets. You can see how this begins to, under, to, to become part of a, a way of thinking about the curriculum. So we had schools that have all been involved in the Tetra Pak project using waste. These things last about two seasons because they're sealed inside. They're, they're sealed with like an internal plastic seal, so they're really waterproof. Um, the idea of dispersed intelligence is, is critical in the project, and what you begin to get is whole schools capturing the information and networking it. And they'd be very, very interested, I'm sure, in talking to some BC schools. Okay? He's using a school that used plastic bottles to grow, to just change a wall and make it more interesting, and they've got different vegetables growing on it. This is, a, this is a greenhouse made out of plastic bottles, water capture, so it's a water theme. This is Lady Gaga made out of waste. Um, this is one of our schools that's on a zero waste eco drive at the moment. They're pretty much there. They, they start, they've started importing waste from local businesses. The business gives them money to take electrical waste and some bits of building waste that they then use as their art materials to, to build other things. They don't buy any art materials anymore. Um, you can use builder sacks to, to carry the sand. You know, the, 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 the whole thing becomes just an amazingly exciting creative project. This is the thinker that Rodan did, made out of plastic bottles, but the same number of plastic bottles, 153, which is the equivalent number of litres of water that we would use in the West or in the UK on a daily basis. And we took that to the guys in Uganda and showed it to them. And they're like, they are utterly speechless. You know, they're, they're on less than 20 litres a day and it's not often very clean. So you, you begin to be able to bridge and discuss that and say, well, what are we going to do about this? I'm going to send you the better version of this slide. I thought last night I'd better just show you it in real time. We're trying to make sense of this as a cyclical project, but basically there's knowledge and information. You have a plotting shed. You could have a solar panel on it. You could do all sorts of stuff. You've got some basic themes. Your school is your community and its hook. 
It creates data and outputs. Now, we're talking with Vodafone and be at IBM at the moment about how that could be modelled, made into an app, and the app becomes a tool that everybody can just download for free, creates more information, it just becomes a virtuous circle. You, you start to see how this thing gathers in momentum. And the reason why Vodafone and IBM and Walmart and all these other people get involved is because they've got money to put into the back end of it to help it to function so that the front end is completely free. And that's the whole point of the project globally. Nobody ever pays for pop-up farm as users. It's sort of beginning to get us into that type of direction. And there's some big, big goals that we want to set in terms of the longer term metrics for this scheme. Could we have a positive energy school, schools that generate more energy than they use? Not difficult, I don't think. Could you have a zero waste school? Not difficult, just think differently. Could you have a positive food school, one that grows all of its own food, which is what China wants to do in the next 20 years? <coughs> Could you have a healthy school? We all know we're already on that route, but could you have it so that there is no junk food? So we're starting to get away from obesity type foods and we're starting to push into a completely different mindset for where we go next. Could the school create all its own compost? Could it be involved in massive biodiversity research? Well, of course it could. That's exactly what we should be doing in, in the sense of getting kids ready to think for the future. As, as, and I'm nearly finished, as, as Branhart and McDonough said, these are two architects, who said, imagine what a world of prosperity and health in the future will look like and begin designing it from the right now. What would it mean to become once again native to this place, the earth, the home of all our relations? This is going to take us all, and it's going to take us forever. But that is the point. Okay? And that's my story, really. Um, thank you. Thank you.